Hello and welcome to Real Talk and Real Grabs, the only wrestling show on YouTube that has no idea what IWGP stands for. A lot happened on last night's Dynamite as well as the final of the New Japan Cup, so we're going to be working to break all of that down in this episode. Starting off with probably the biggest thing that happened yesterday, the New Japan Cup final uh, was yesterday. We saw Yoda Suji go over Haruki Goto, and I really enjoyed it. I thought the match was uh, really awesome, and I like to see Yoda Suji win uh, as somebody who is uh, newly getting into New Japan. One of the big things that I liked was being able to A, watch the New Japan Cup, but B, really get behind and get invested in Yoda Suji. I really like his character. I think he tells a good story in the ring. And I like his finisher. I think it's called the Gene Buster, but it looks like a spear to me. I don't know. I'm not the expert, obviously. But I am excited to see what he does next. I'm not, like, knowledgeable enough about New Japan to make, like, booking predictions or anything. But I don't think he wins it off Naito at Sakura Genesis, just because I know Mox has a match at Windy City Riot that probably wants to have a world title involved. So... I think he's losing, but I think it's going to be a fun match anyway. I really enjoy him wrestle, and I like to see guys I like being elevated up to uh, main event scenes and put in big positions. I know a lot of people are really unhappy with uh, the champions in New Japan right now, and again, I don't know that much about it, but if uh, that is true, feels like one of the better ways to fix that is to put a young guy who's face and really over in the world title picture. Moving on to Dynamite, though, we had a really big opener with Mercedes Monet uh, cutting a promo at the beginning, which, I don't know, I didn't think it was that good. I don't want to like sound like a Mercedes Monet hater, because I'm really excited she's in AEW, but that I, she stumbled over her words a little, you know, happens to everybody, but it, it wasn't that awesome, and I want to acknowledge that. The big news out of this Dynamite, though, was Eddie Kingston losing to Kazuchika Okada for the Continental Classic belt. Um, sucks. Not sucks, really. I like Eddie Kingston a lot. But uh, if there was going to be somebody to dethrone him, I don't see why it shouldn't be Kazuchika Okada, right? I think it's cool that he's immediately being given AEW's second best title. I would say the Continental Classic title is definitely the second best title. Um, within like weeks of signing with the company, he's absolutely talented enough for it. I didn't think the match was that great, but that's just because I didn't feel like things got enough time to develop. You know, I, I would be surprised if we don't see this uh, run back either at Dynasty or on another Dynamite, but I am excited to see what Okada can do with this. I think, again, very well deserved, and Okada's been doing awesome heel work with uh, the Bucks and just against everybody, really. He's got a really good, like, shit-eating grin, if you know what I'm talking about, where uh, he gave Eddie something, like, on the ramp uh, during last night's show, and then camera pans up to him just standing over him just like grinning fucking ear to ear i was like oh hell yeah you know i think he's doing great heel work again i'm really excited to see uh where he goes from here i forgot to say this originally but Pac or is it pack i'm gonna say Pac. Pac coming out after okada won the continental classic title bro bro that's so cool i'm actually so hyped for that i've always described Pac as like reminiscent of a game of thrones character and that's I I, th I think that's a perfect encapsulation of what he is. He is so fun to watch wrestle. I love his character. I love his voice. I love that fucking accent. It makes him sound so scary. Okada is obviously, I mean, one of the, one of the greatest working wrestlers, uh, at least currently. Uh, that would be a fucking awesome match, whether it be a dynasty, whether it be on a random dynamite. Uh, book it. Book it, Tony. Book it for the next 10 years. Next, we had Hook versus Jericho, and it completely killed the vibe. Um, one thing you're never going to hear from me is uh, me defending Jericho because I, I don't really like him at all. But I do like Hook, like Hook a lot. And I was glad that he put Hook over and Hook kind of kicked Jericho's ass. Um, I thought that was fun. I don't want to see him associated with Jericho at all moving forward. I don't want Lion Hook to be a tag team. I think that would suck. And frankly, I don't want Chris Jericho on my TV at all anytime soon. But the match was pretty fun. Um, as fun as it can be with Chris Jericho, I think Hook did a lot of good stuff. Jericho obviously has his issues as a wrestler. Um, but other than that, did really kind of uh, bring the vibe down on the Dynamite, um, especially after like such a like heavy hitter, uh, a big money match like Eddie and Okada. 
text, I believe, was the Will Ospreay promo. And I have a tweet out uh, at Seven Foot Point Guard on Twitter. Follow your boy. Um, that just says, give Will Ospreay a live mic every Dynamite until the end of time. And each promo he gets on Dynamite only reaffirms this. Only makes me look smarter and more correct. Um, he is so... Like, my big thing with Will Ospreay and why I'm really enjoying his run so far is it like how much fun it looks like he's having. Like he's coming, skipping out of the tunnel, skipping down the ramp, big smile, you know, cracking jokes at himself, you know, waving to fans, all that. It's, it's awesome. He, he looks like he's having so much fun and that's really getting him over with me along with, you know, being one of the best wrestlers in the world. Um, he's wrestling Shibata next week too, which is so fucking cool. The story with Obviously, Danielson, you know, whatever he can do, I can do better. I can beat Shibata better than Danielson did. Awesome. So excited for that match at Dynasty. It's going to be spectacular. Um, I am a Will Ospreay dick rider. I'll, I'll say it. Um, he's absolutely won me over in uh, on Dynamite and in the, like, YouTube indie matches I've seen him in. Uh, I really love him. And I also really love Danielson. And, yeah, all of his promos – from the bruv chants to the yelling to, you know, I am the feeling uh, really, you know, riles me up. It gets me ready for a fight, you know. Next, we had uh, Tony Storm and Mariah May versus Thunder Rosa and Deanna Perrazzo. Not too much to say here. Um, I thought it was cool. I thought it was, you know, a fun little six-minute match. Didn't go on for too long. Didn't drag. You know, obviously, they had to give uh, Cope and Christian a lot of time, which we'll get to. But I love the Tony Storm storyline. I love the storyline with uh, Mariah May. Mariah May is just jacking Tony Storm's old style. Um, I'm a big Tony Storm guy. I don't know if I've said that, but I'm a big fan of hers. And I would love to see a Thunder Rosa, a uh, Tony Storm match. Thunder Rosa obviously getting the pin here. Deanna Perrazzo looked pissed off, but hey, maybe that's a match. That could be fun for the number one contendership for the uh, women's title. That could be fun. Book it. Uh, but I liked it. Um, I think it's going to progress the story really efficiently. And I would, if I had to guess, I would say Thunder Rosa is probably Tony Storm's next challenger. And I'm excited for that because Thunder Rosa is a really good wrestler. Next was Swerve Strickland versus The Butcher. Uh, Swerve issued an open challenge. And yeah, uh, not much to say there. Uh, cool, fun little three-minute match. I love Swerve, but it wasn't really anything super spectacular. I mean, again, they got three minutes. There's just not much to say. And finally, of course, the Dynamite main event, the I Quit match between uh, Adam Copeland and Christian Cage for the TNT title. Awesome. Super happy. I'm super happy AEW has become a, a promotion and a place for uh, older wrestlers who are kind of close to the end of their careers to still come in and show, hey, you know, I still got it. I can still do that shit. Christian has been a great example of it. And uh, Copeland's feud with Christian has been a great example of it. This match was awesome. I really liked it. I love um Kind of hardcore matches like this. I quit matches can kind of be, you know, a little finicky for me. They can be really hit or miss. But I, I really liked this one. Uh, I'm a sucker for, like, hockey jerseys in, like, street fights or I quit matches. And the Bruins and Maple Leaf spot popped me because I love hockey. I'm a big hockey guy. Um, there's a shot of Copeland, like, just standing with his arms up in the Maple Leafs jersey. And the crowd is going fucking insane. And that's my shit, dude. Art but make it sports has to get on that. But... Uh, really a little messy near the end with uh, Lugisaurus, Mama Wayne, and Nick Wayne. I just said Mama Wayne out loud. That sounds really weird to me. But then obviously being assisted by Daniel Garcia and Daddy Magic. Daddy Magic is also something that's weird to say out loud. Um, I thought it got a little messy there, but overall I liked the ending. I thought it was funny that Christian got hit in the balls and said, I quit. I thought uh, Copeland bleeding looked cool as hell copeland the the spot that sticks in my head from this is copeland like going up off the ladder and out of the ring onto like luchasaurus and nick wayne fucking insane he's what like 45 50 doing that Dude. <laughs> we're witnessing greatness in real time really but i really did love the match copeland as tnt champ i would guess personally his next challenger is daniel garcia i would guess storyline wise it's probably hey you help me get this like, you deserve uh, a shot at this challenge first because uh, a shot at this championship first because you helped me get it. And uh, that would make sense. I love Daniel Garcia. Um, I Something you'll notice about me is I just love wrestlers in general. Like, you, you, you got to be pretty shit to, like, not have me say, I love this wrestler. Uh, I just, I, I love a lot of the AEW and WWE and 
New Japan roster in general. And yeah, I think the logical next step for the TNT title would be uh, Copeland versus Daniel Garcia, possibly a dynasty. Then for Rampage, I'll be honest, I didn't watch it. I think three hours of wrestling is a little too much for me for any roster, really. Um, not to take away from anything Takeshita or the women did, but it, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of done after two hours. I'm kind of checked out. It goes for every company, by the way. Raw, I think, is a little too long as well. Um, I, I, you know, skip around a little. And in New Japan, I, I skip around to see, you know, oh, uh, the money don't kneel or wrestling. Let's watch that. And then, you know, skip a Bullet Club match or whatever and go on to, like, a New Japan Cup match. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah, three hours of wrestling too long for me. Uh, I'll probably go back and watch the street fight just because I heard Sky Blue did great, and I'm really excited to see what Sky Blue does uh, throughout the rest of her career. But other than that, yeah, did not watch Rampage. Sorry. And that's really for me today. Um, I don't want these videos to be too long. As you can tell, they're very casual. It's the first video. You know, it's, it's going to be a lot like this. I want to be putting out uh, more, like, kind of focused wrestling content every now and then too. But for the most part, it's going to be me reviewing shows that I watched and enjoyed or didn't enjoy or just, you know, weekly shows in general. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you like the kind of casual, more laid back, uh, conversational tone, or if you would prefer something more like scripted and deliberate. Um, it's easier and I kind of like it a little more to do just like conversational I'm not good at talking all pointed and like serious and shit. I'm not good at reading off a script either. I'd rather just get my like personal thoughts out there straight up, no editing. And, you know, if I fuck up, I fuck up. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what kind of like pointed scripted videos you'd like to see. And uh, I'm going to catch you. Follow my TikTok too. Uh, Real Graps, two S's.